<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which car? Depends on what kind of car it is. No. <laughs> How is everyone? It's good to see you. We praise God. Well, I'll only be gone one Sunday, so do not fear. And then we'll be back on the trip for uh, April is still on, just to be clear on that. Uh, I want to honor my wife, Alma, for uh, her intercession, her prayer. She carries all of you in her heart, and she carries me. And uh, she's really the strength in my ministry. So I praise God for that. I bless you, my beautiful, beautiful wife. Hallelujah. I have... So much I could say, but I won't take time, but uh, we want to honor you. And uh, when she prays, things happen. And she has all kinds of testimonies. She was in Mexico all last week because her daughter graduated from medical school in Guadalajara. And she was traveling with her family, who are mostly Catholic, mostly unbelievers en route to becoming spirit-filled believers. But there were so many miracles occurred just even in those six days that she was gone, uh, really phenomenal, really phenomenal. The Lord is faithful, and she's got a, a special in with God. So <laughs> that's a clue if you, if you need a breakthrough. Uh, I don't want her to be flooded with prayer requests, but uh, yeah. Anyways, I praise God. I thank the Lord for what he's doing in Passion Church, and uh, we're thankful that the pastors are back here with us. We embrace them. We embrace what he is doing in their lives and through them, and uh, what he has for us as the days unfold ahead of us. I think he has good things. I know he does. I know he does. Some of you are new here. We welcome you. This is a, a church that's spirit-filled and loves the Lord and loves worship. Amen. And I was so blessed by your response to the Lord last week as you began to worship uh, with greater abandon, which is what I'm looking for. And I'm believing God to, to rebirth and to uh, give birth to new things here in the church. I believe that he is on the move. Hallelujah. So um, I'm excited and, uh, and I'm anticipating great things in my spirit. I want to uh, pick up on what we said. If we could just close our eyes for a minute. And Father, we just reach out to you uh, again. Lord, we quickly disconnect with you, with you and um, we ask you to be the one to teach us, to uh, engage us. We need your grace. We need, as, that we, as we draw close to you, we're asking you to draw close to us. And we're asking you to activate uh, deep within us uh, the things of the Spirit and a worship that, hallelujah, is what your word says is true worship. Hallelujah. We give you praise for that. And I take that from John 4, 24. If you could put that verse up there again that we uh, talked about last week, I want to expand on it a little bit. He says, the hour is coming and now is, these are the words of Jesus, when the true worshipers will worship the Father, what does it say? In spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. And then he says, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. Those that worship him in spirit and in truth. So I want to talk to you a little bit more about worshiping in the spirit. And I said to you that that is when we engage our spirit in worship. We, we go past the nice melody, the, the cool rhythm, you know, the, uh, some people can really dance up a storm and uh, we have to be careful because sometimes it's just mostly in the flesh, you know, and uh, we're never entirely in the spirit, we're, we're, and um, perhaps we're not entirely in the flesh because uh, we're, we're joined together, the flesh and the spirit are, but, but we're looking to become more aware of the activity of our spirit, the function of our spirit. God, God made us three parts, body, soul, and spirit, and your spirit came alive when you received Christ. So I don't have time to, I don't want to go into a lot of detail about that, but I want to appeal to certain experiences that you may have to encourage you to activate your spirit, engage your spirit with the Lord, and become more aware of your spirit. Your spirit is an amazing, amazing part of you. It's the part of you that's eternal. It's the part you'll have. You'll be forever and ever. We live forever, guys. Hallelujah. We, we, uh, you know, David commanded his soul. He said, why so downcast, O my soul, yet hope in the Lord? Uh, because our soul is very, very problematic. It's the 
one that whines and complains and hurts and is sad and can't get over and I just can't forgive her for what she did and, uh, you know, all those things. I know that's not anybody here, but um, uh, the, the things that most of the ministry we do in church is to the soul because we're just so sad and I'm so depressed. And if for a while it was uh, in, popular to be depri- depri- not deprived, but uh, depressed, you know, and they'd say, I'm depri. Maybe that was only in Spanish. They'd say, yeah, you know, I'm depri or something like that. They would say things like, that was, that was the fad among young people, you know, to say I'm depressed. And uh, so we have all these things that we uh, complain and moan and groan about, and yet we have a spirit which is willing to sacrifice, willing to put up with uh, and endure difficulty, and to persist in times of pain and lack. Uh, We have a spirit that comes alive and rejoices when truth wins out, when when justice is is met out in uh, situations of of injustice. We have a spirit that's willing to to give sacrificially, to go above and beyond, uh, that sustains us in sickness. The Bible talks about it sustaining us in sickness. And so many, many things some of you have had experiences of deja vu. You say, I just, wow, something just, and, and something, it's your spirit coming alive to something that's in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. And so your spirit needs to be fed. And I'm, I'm not suggesting that we worship in the spirit to feed our spirit, but that is one of the benefits of worshiping in the spirit. Your spirit is fed. Your spirit is fed when you hear a story that you can really relate to, that you just grasp onto. I remember a video that uh, I showed to some people, uh, the video that made the whole world cry. And, you know, just something that we all identify with because it, uh, uh, it, it, it speaks to our humanity. And uh, so those are those things people see puppies and they go, oh, they see little children and they go, oh, and, and you, you play with children There are many things in the natural that cause our spirit to come alive. That's the part of you that God is calling you to engage when you're in worship. Romans chapter 8, if you have that uh, verse up there, there several verses, he he talks about, I'm just going to point out some words. He says, sufferings, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Well, I'm just going to read through some of this. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility. God, God's doing. He subjected the, the, all of creation to futility, not willing, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because creation itself will also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. How many of you identify with what Paul's saying here in Romans 8? These are, again, I'm not taking time to to, um, unpack this. For we know that the whole creation, that's what I wanted to come to, groans and labors with birth pangs until now. And then he says, not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, what does it say? Groan within ourselves. These are groanings of the spirit. These aren't the groanings of complaint. It's not the groaning of, of pain because I'm in pain or because uh, think bad things have happened to me. These are the, the groanings of the spirit of creation. Amen. I'm going to tell you a very interesting experience, and it may seem like I'm going on a rabbit trail, and you can bring, help me come back if I do. But uh, my sister leads a group of intercessors, and they went up to the northern shores of Wisconsin, Lake Michigan, and uh, began to worship. And they spent about 10 hours just worshiping the Lord, and some of them had drums. And if you, if you heard it, you'd say they were kind of loony or something, you know, just out, out there. You know, it was pretty just prophetic worship, whatever came, that's what they they sang and did and played the drums and some instruments, and some of it was harmonious because I saw a video of it, and some of it wasn't. Um, but they, they were there for some time, and I can't remember what led up to it, but uh, one of the brothers, David Ruiz is his name, he's, a, he's actually a worship leader, writes music, uh, saw uh, a, a Native American woman with a baby coming out of the woods towards the shores where they were standing in the spirit. And um, he said, look, 
and they all saw her, and then all kinds of Native Americans started coming, and they said, we've been waiting for you. Welcome, welcome. We've been waiting for you. All in the spirit. They weren't, these were not real people, or at least not manifest physical people, but this was a, a thing of the spirit. I don't understand it. I don't think they do either, but uh, that somehow these spirits, whether they were angels or however you want to term it, because I don't fit that into my, my theology about uh, spirits and angels, but uh, they were there and they were welcoming these worshipers who had come to redeem the land. And, and so just, a, just a, I want you to understand that there's more going on than you're aware of. I want you to understand that the spirit world is very, very real. You go to the ocean and you just see the water, you see the beach, you see the sun, you see the, the people, but underneath the water, there's a whole world of stuff going on. And in the same way in the spirit, there's a whole world of stuff going on. And so uh, I'll continue reading here in verse 23. He says, not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the spirit, I am talking about worship today, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body, for we were saved in this hope. But hope that is not seen, I'm sorry, hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Pausing for emphasis. But we hope for what we do not see. We eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps, talking about Holy Spirit, in our weakness. This is our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. That's our weakness, by the way. The Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So there's a, there's a, there's a deep, deep place. It says in, uh, what is it, Psalm, I can't remember. It's, it's, actually, I think I better put that up there. Psalm, one of those Psalms, it says, um, hallelujah, that Psalm 8, he says that, that uh, deep calls unto deep at the sound of the water spout. I, again, I, I don't know what that means, and I'm not going to try. I'm not going to try, but I'm, I'm, I'm trusting that there's something in your spirit that identifies with, with the deep, deep, deep places of God and the deep places of his spirit that call unto the deep places in you. And, it, and it's there that, that uh, as we bring forth worship, it, it, it's there where there's pain, where there's anguish, where there's that cry of the child in you that says, why did this happen to me? Why are things like this? And you just say, ah! And it's there if you'll begin to worship the Lord. It's there that you'll find that God will take things deep, deep in your life. And he wants to, and he wants to bring a transformation that happens as we do. So I'm, I'm, I'm stabbing, I'm trusting you to catch these things in the spirit without trying to explain them uh, with a lot of, with a lot of uh, detail. Hallelujah. Several things happen, of course, as we, we worship the Lord. Um, according to Psalm 22, 3, he is enthroned by our praises. I don't know if I had that up there. It says in the King James Version that uh, he, is, uh, he inhabits the praises of our people. And, and we know that. He comes. As we I remember listening to Steve Fry years ago, he said, if we will prepare a place, he'll come. You, you, you prepare an altar in your life, here in your heart. You, you prepare a, a throne, a place where he, he will come. But it's not about you. It's about him. Why does he command worship? The, the job of the priests in the Old Testament where now a kingdom of priests was to minister to God and to minister to the people, also to minister on behalf of the people. Why did he command them to praise, to lift up worship? The incense that they lifted up, we're told, in the New Testament is, uh, are, are our prayers. We find in Revelations that the uh, elders have these bowls of incense. So they, they pour it out before the king. They're, our prayers, the accumulation of our prayers. Isn't that phenomenal? But wh why does he command, is he just egotistical and wants the praise for himself? 
No, it's because it's the way he designed things. We were designed to worship. As I said last week, we will either worship him or we'll worship other things. And because he knows that the very, very best thing for us is God. God is love. He loves us. Everything he does is, is redemptive. Everything he does is out of love. He knows that the very best thing for us is that we would worship him. I, I shared with you a time back that uh, th there was a time when I was uh, in my first years in the Lord, I felt like I didn't, couldn't do anything right. And I was still doing drugs and smoking, which, you know, I'm not, I'm not proud of. And uh, I would just, in times, there were moments that I would just despair because, Lord, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not overcoming this, these bad habits. And uh, I've done again what I feel ashamed uh, about. And uh, I really want to be free. And again, he just disworshipped me, and I would, and the, his presence was overwhelming uh, as I lifted my hands to him. And I found that as I worshipped him, the desires changed. And he cleansed me and set me free from the inside out. And I found during worship that people get healed, they get delivered. I remember one time I had a terrible earache. I was worshipping the Lord. For a minute, I forgot about it, and then I suddenly realized it's gone. Wow. And uh, I hear so many testimonies of people getting delivered during worship. I, I'm, I'm not just encouraging you to worship the Lord. I am insisting that passion becomes a church of worshipers. I am insisting that we become known in the city for our worship. We have, a, we have an amazing worship team. I'm so, so happy, you know, as, as the events have turned, as we've, you know, continue to navigate into this year. We have a worship team that's more and more hungry for the move of the Spirit. And I see that in you as well. And so I'm, I'm very excited about that. Hallelujah. And so uh, he actually goes to war on our behalf as we worship. He actually goes to war on our behalf as we worship. And uh, I think that Angels are activated. Do you have that Psalm 8-2? There's different versions of the course of this. This is the NIV version. It says, through the praise of children and infants, you have established, what does it say? A stronghold against your enemies. Wow, hallelujah is right. To silence the foe and the avenger. Wow, wow. He establishes a stronghold against the enemy. It's a protective covering for us, a place where we can hide. So, yeah, things are falling apart around me. There, there's all this trouble in my life. The, the, you know, the situation here and, and over here, and I feel like they're pressing in against me, but I have this place. It's like the Ark of Noah, this place of worship, this place of intimacy with God this place of security because there, there's, there's nothing that anyone can say against our worship. They can mock us, and, but, but there's nothing, there's no argument against you as a worshiper. No matter how messed up you think your life is, there's nothing anyone can say about it, about you as a worshiper against you. Psalm 149.5, I know I mentioned this uh, earlier, and I'm not going to, again, I won't take time uh, to, to really uh, develop it, but uh, it's just such a wonderful, wonderful passage of Scripture for me. He says, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. How many of you sing on your bed? <laughs> you're going to have to get used to it. If your spouse is, you know, not okay with it, you're just going to have to get them used to it. He, he's, he's saying, let this be true of the saints. You and I are the saints. You may not feel like a saint, but the Bible says you either are or you're not. You're either the righteous or you're not the righteous. He's, that's what it is. The, the new birth is all about us becoming the saints of God. Hallelujah. It's not Saint John who's been venerated in the church. It's, it's, saint P, it's each of us are saints. Hallelujah. That is what the Bible says. He says, let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. For me, the high praises are the, the majesty. Those are the, you know, the, the proclamation type. But um, you can interpret that however you want. Uh, but let them be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. This is a two-edged sword. By the way, 
when I was a child, we had music class, which I think is wonderful. And uh, I can remember clearly in third grade that the music teacher said, I have a music teacher in here. There you are. Hallelujah. Uh, said, you, you know all your uh, music, you know, the notes and all the technical stuff, uh, but you can't sing. So, <laughs> you're monotone. She said, I'm going to give you a C in the class, which is like, you know, between the A and the F, right? Because you know all your stuff, but you can't sing. And she said, don't sing, just mouth the words. Can you imagine how cruel that, that is to a child? And then, you know, my mother was pretty musical, and we used to sing Christmas carols and all this, and uh, I can remember a certain point where she started having a, a, a kind of a distressed look on her when she, when she would hear me sing, and so, <laughs> so it wasn't, when I came to the Lord, I knew that I knew that I knew that I had to sing. It was my way of relating to him, but it's not about singing. It's about what's in your heart, yeah, yeah. So I actually like the songs that have no words to them. I'll get to that in a minute. So he says, to execute vengeance, this two-edged sword in your hand and the high praises of your mouth, execute vengeance, what does it say? On the nations. I don't think he's talking about vengeance against, you know, Brazil or the United States or Canada. I think he's talking about demonic nations. I think he's talking about supernatural entities that have warred against us. We're, we're, we're declaring vengeance. He's going to war on our behalf through our praises. Get a hold of this, people, because it's one of your most powerful weapons. I'm not going to compare it to the other weapons that we have, but it is one of the most powerful weapons. For we fight, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. The weapons of our warfare are mighty in God, for the pulling down of strongholds. To bind their kings with chains, punishments on the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all the saints. This is your honor that you would execute vengeance on demonic entities, that you would imprison nobles with fetters of iron through your worship on your bed, in the car, on the way to work, in the bathroom break at work, wherever it is that you, I know some of you remember that I said that last week. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you know that you, I'm talking about things that occur during worship. You, you actually become, this is why God established worship. I, 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 I presume some of the things I'm saying are things I presume, okay? Um, but they work. And I, and I believe that, the, that God is speaking. Because you become like that which you worship. You, you, you become, if, if, if you worship a, a bad guy, then you, you start walking around like a bad guy, you know? But when you worship Jesus, you become like Jesus. He, he softens us. And as we begin to, I could say a whole lot of things, the things that we emulate or the things that we go after in life, our models, our mentors, if you like, the best person to be mentored by is Jesus himself, but human mentors are important too. And so we become, the more we worship him, the more we become like him, and he is committed. That is one of the primary things that he wants to do on the earth. He wants to get you, to, you and me to trust him, and he wants you and me to become like him. Christ is being formed in us so that we would be Jesus to the world. Angels are activated. You know, I, was, I don't know if I've told this story. I don't know if Pastor Bob's heard this story, but when you organized the uh, Randy Clark um, teaching the conference, um, over there at, at Victory Church, uh, during one of the nights, Randy Clark says, um, "There's angels just came in over this over here like this," and I'm honestly, I'm I'm standing here down below, and I attended all his classes, and you know, helped out um, in some different areas, and um, I thought, 
Okay. Yeah, right. I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. I'm a skeptic. I don't, you know, when people tell me that, oh, man, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> um, and so he said angels came in across this room. About a half hour goes by, and I was thinking, I'm really tired. I had service that night, Wednesday night service. I was pastoring down here in South Tucson. I'm just going to leave. And so several things happened that kept me from leaving. And then I'm, again, now I'm going to leave, and I walk over on this side, and this lady comes to me very uh, almost distraught, and she says, my two grandsons have been diagnosed with, see if I can remember the diagnosis. Um, they have, uh, ay, ay, ay. they're both bipolar and schizophrenic, but there was another, another word with that. And she had the two boys there, and they looked kind of, kind of strange. I, wanted, I was going to say deranged, but that's not very nice. But um, there, were a lot, there was so much healing of people with mental disorders during that conference. Just phenomenal, phenomenal. But I, I walked over, and I just, with compassion, I just reached out my hand to them. And suddenly they shot back, and about 10 people around them shot back. And the chairs, the two rows of the chairs, just this type of chairs that interlocked, all going like this. It was, it was crazy. And I'm thinking a discharge of energy from heaven, lightning bolt. And suddenly I felt this. It was the wing of an angel. It was so real and so, I mean, it hit me hard. It was a big, heavy wing. And I, I knew that I knew in that moment. It was the angels that had come in from the other side of the room. Just phenomenal. So angels, I can't tell you how many times we've heard angels as we're worshiping. I came to the Lord, the first thing I heard was angels. That's, that's what brought me to Jesus. Um, singing, they were singing, they were worshiping. And the Lord put in my heart that it was 10,000 of them. You know, a choir of 10,000, I don't know why that number. But uh, the angel, angels are activated. I don't have scripture to specifically back that, but um, they do hearken their ear to his voice. Uh, it says that they are ministers, flames of fire, sent to minister to those that would inherit salvation. That's you and me, we're inheriting salvation. They've been sent to minister to us. We don't talk to them, we don't look for them, we don't, but they're, they're around. Isn't that great? Isn't that great to know that God has provided for us in so many, many, many amazing ways? And as we worship and we get closer, we break free from the things that bind us. There's a whole lot of things that bind us on this, uh, in this earth. And, and I don't mean so much physically, although there are those too. But we break free from the fear, the anxiety, the, the insecurity, the jealousy, the, the, jealousy the, the things that keep us earthbound, that, that keep us uh, thinking that we don't have enough, that we're not enough, that uh, all of those things that we struggle with in life and, you know, what these people did. And as we worship, we begin to see things through his eyes. He sees things, he has a different perspective than we do. He sees things from the mountaintop. And uh, it's a good place to go when you're down in the valley. Yeah, so, so worship is a, amazing, amazing. Another thing happens when you worship him for who he is. You worship him in truth. True worshipers worship him in spirit and in truth. So you worship him as your provider. You, you worship him as your healer. He is my healer, my Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals my disease. And I worship him, and I, I, I begin to uh, see him as bigger in one specific area, that of healing, and, and, and the Cancer becomes less of an issue, at least it becomes not as big as it was before. And you will find that he will become that because you're empowering him. When you, when you give in to fear, you empower the author of fear. When you give to lies, because there's a whole bunch of lies attached to your fears, you're empowering the author of lies, the father of lies, the devil, but when you, when you worship him for who he is as your healer, as your, your truth, 
doesn't work to try to do this, this, and this, and this. So, you know, I'd, I'd want to. But when you get free in one area, it still has a spillover effect, and it begins to affect other areas in your life. And you become stronger, and you're more able to believe him for bigger and greater things. Amen? So try that. Worship him. We used to sing this song. I had this, this pastor from Phoenix that used to come down, and we would invite him to do the old time revivals. And, you know, we had so much fun with him. And uh, he would, because in particular, because he would bring about five or six people as his team, and he would prepare them. They would pray up and be in prayer and fasting. And we, had, we would just, we would go all day from Friday night, Saturday, all day Saturday, and Sunday we were planning to end, you know, 12 o'clock or whenever the service ended. We'd end up going sometimes till 7, 8 at night, Sunday, because the, the presence of God was there. And um, he would sing this song. I'm trying to remember. Um, Whose report would you believe? Will you believe? We would sing that one, but then we would also sing the, um, oh, I'm, I'm blanking on it. Lisa will have to help me later. But there was a one girl in there. Her name was Maria. She wore stilettos, really, really high, high heels and black lacy dresses. And she could sing really beautifully like Aretha Franklin. I mean, the type that would break glass with her voice. And so the Lord put in my heart, there were some people that were, um, that we couldn't get free. They were demonized and all kinds of stuff. And there was a, several different incidents that was like this. But I call her, Maria, Maria, come here, come here, come here. I want you to sing over here. No, no, no words. Just she would just sing. Like, like uh, mostly in a high frequency. Um, that's not really the issue. But there was something that would break in the spirit. I've heard that Native American medicine men will sing. There's a there's a counterfeit that the enemy actually uses. They'll sing and they'll you know. As a matter of fact, we saw that in Peru. And uh, we would say, okay, now you're going to do it uh, with the Holy Spirit. You're not going to do it. You're going you're gonna to tell those spirits that can't come around. Actually, that's a very common uh, form of healing, that, that ritual that goes with, the, with healing in the medicine men in certain parts of Peru. And uh, so she would sing, and, and people would get delivered. It was just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And... and it touches a place in me of just hunger. I just want, I so want Holy Spirit to move, and I want to move in those deep places with him. I want to go past my own thoughts and wishes and desires and emotions and all the things that I mentioned before. And uh, hallelujah, move in closer to him. I find eight times in Scripture that he tells us to sing a new song unto the Lord. Now, a new song is a song that hasn't been sung before. As soon as you sung it, it's an old song. When somebody else wrote it and <laughs> you know, recorded it, now it's an old song. So he says, sing a new song unto the Lord. As a matter of fact, Psalm 149 starts with that, sing a new song unto the Lord. So, so this is where the, we marry the prophetic with our worship. And Holy Spirit joins right in with you. Everything we do with God is like this. It's the two of us together. Just like your soul and your spirit, you can't really separate them. You don't separate yourself from Holy Spirit. Well, it's just God. No, no. He did it with you. He wants to do it with you. And, and he will continue to do it with you. And so we worship with him. And he glorifies the Father in us. And he gives you words. But I really like the words of the Spirit. They work better for me because my mind kicks in as soon as I start trying to think in English. And so I just go, and I just love to sing in the Spirit. And I long, every worship set, I, I don't know if you noticed today, they gave us just a, a little bit of time, maybe about 15 or 20 seconds at the end where they're, um, Joel started out today with just a little bit of, in the beginning, we just invite you, Holy Spirit. I want that to continue. My spirit longs for that. And I know everywhere we go, you know, people say, well, you know, the people are kind of uncomfortable with that. Of course the flesh is uncomfortable with that. 
but my spirit is hungry for it. And, and I've watched how God moves when we go past the natural and we sing a new song. I used to, I, I, I really am still fairly amusical, even though I sing. But, um, and I'm okay if I'm by myself, but if you put me with a, with a musician, I'll drive them crazy. I mean, it's just because I go out of uh, tone, and I go out of tune, and I go out of rhythm. And as much as I, in my mind, I think I can sing and dance really well, but it doesn't, my body doesn't correspond to what I, what I fantasize about. But I used to lead worship in the Pima County Jail because there was no one else to do it. You know, we would do services there every week. Uh, two F and G uh, units of people in the county jail. So a couple of you know what I'm talking about. And uh, I would bring my guitar and I thought, okay, do I just sing the songs or do I, because what I do best is just to play some chords and just, I love you, Lord. That's what I, I prefer to do then, you know. And it goes on from there. And uh, so I, you know, have this debate within myself but I noticed that every time I'd sing in the spirit and I'd go past the songs that were pre-written in English, the, the old songs, hallelujah, Holy Spirit would just, it was like the, the level uh, of presence of God would just go up to a whole nother level and miracles would start to happen. Suddenly somebody's in the back, they're just weeping, weeping, weeping. Somebody else falls down over here and it's just amazing, just amazing. We walked into a church in Uganda and I, I didn't preach. Remember that um, in, in Maga Maga? I didn't preach. I just, because Holy Spirit just started moving. That's, that's what revival is. That's the, the, the beginning, at least, the birth pangs of revival. So we want that. We want that here at Passion. It's going to come as we together move into those, those deeper places, move into those higher places. There, there's a low road and there's a high road. And, and you can rise above. If you would begin in the morning, I said this before, but I'll say it again, before you come to church, begin worshiping. Prepare yourself before you go to church. You know, prepare yourself the night before. Put aside your, uh, your, your clothing and uh, your, your iron the shirt and find out where the car keys are so at the last minute you're not running. Where's the car keys? You know, and, and, and you can get up and, hey, it's Sunday, and, and be prayerful, and then... I'm going to start to worship the Lord. So as I come through those doors, my spirit's already expecting. Because you know how, it, all you have to do is ask Elisa what it's like, and uh, any worship leader has the same thing. They're just pulling, and they're pulling, come on, worship the Lord. And people are like, you know, like, okay. You know, it's like, well, I don't really feel, I'm not really quite awake yet. I need my second cup of coffee. And it's like, no, 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 there's a high road. Choose the high road. Amen. So I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up here. Where's Joel? Where's Lisa? Hallelujah. If they would, and I'd like to ask you to stand and um, just lift your hands and however the Lord leads you. And I'd like us to take just a few minutes to worship the Lord before we dismiss. The only hindrance to God moving in your life is that you believe there's a hindrance. He's already moving and he wants to continue to move. He's calling us. He's called the lover of our souls. Amen. You are the apple of his eye. You are the treasure that he found in the field. And he went and he sold everything he had to go and purchase that field so he could dig out the treasure. He's digging you and me out of the mud. He's lifting us up. He's wiping away the tears. He's cleansing us with the water of his word. He's loving on us. He has nurture in his heart. 
His tender mercies are forever. The world tells us to be tough. He tells us to be broken. He said, he who does not fall on the rock and is broken will be crushed. We found a better place. He's built a stronghold against your enemies. You will overcome. Yes. Yes. sing it to him. Give me Jesus. Can we just sing that line, just give me Jesus? Just that line, give me Jesus. Is open. Come to the altar. Let's gather together. Let's build an altar of praise, an altar of worship. The name above all names. looking for Jesus, come on. within you. Say, give me Jesus. I need more of you, Jesus. I need you in the deep places of my life. I need you, Lord. Whether it's addiction, whether it's fear, where this 
this world Lift him higher, lift him higher. Lift him up, lift him higher. We just kind of sing, I exalt thee, Lord. But there's a deeper, deeper place. If you'll sing from that place, that, that's the place that, that sometimes is troubled in our lives. If you'll sing from, from deep, deep within. I exalt thee. Pastor Ed teaches us guys to sing loud so they can hear it across the street, but it's it's not just the volume, it's the, the place that it comes from. So if you'll sing from deep, 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 deep within and begin to exalt him, okay, we're gonna lift him higher than the problems. We're gonna lift him higher than your insecurity. We're gonna lift him higher and make him bigger. Hallelujah. Through our exaltation, hallelujah.
Let's do I, I exalt thee first. Come on, from deep within. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh, God. I exalt Is he getting bigger? Are the problems becoming less? Is he becoming stronger? Is he more able? Is he more real? Hallelujah. We exalt you, Lord, over every circumstance, over every difficulty, over every illness, over every family problem. We exalt you over our financial need. We, de we exalt you, Lord, over the depravity of a generation. We exalt you higher. We lift you higher. We lift you higher. We declare that the earth and the fullness thereof is of the Lord. We declare that this generation belongs to Jesus. We declare, Lord, that we are a church that worships. We are declare that we we are a church of power. We declare that we are a church of miracles. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you that the supernatural here is natural. We thank you, Lord, that you are a, a power, a God of power, a God of glory, a God of love. We give you praise. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. We lift you up. We lift you up. May our lives, hallelujah, begin to reflect your glory. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. One more time, I exalt thee. Hallelujah. I exalt thee. I time. the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. We bless you. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. We have a word. We have a prayer team. We'll be here to pray for any specific needs that you may have. The, I heard somebody say the coffee ministry. It's really the fellowship ministry. Um, there's, there's coffee out there to accompany your fellowship time. Hallelujah. God bless you. Carry Jesus with you. Carry Jesus with you. You're entering your mission field. Bless you, Passion Church. Thank you, Pastor Bob. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. Joel, well done. Well done, all of you. Thank you.